Well, it's lovely to see you here in Dubai. Perhaps you can give me an insight into the thought process of competing this year at the Standard Chartered Dubai Marathon. It's a, it's a really incredible course. It's, it's quite fast. And I figured if I come here and I can do a good time early in the season, it sets me up to qualify for Tokyo 2020 just a little bit better. So I thought, let's give it a shot. Let's come out here. It's, it's a bit hard coming off a break. Of course, everybody takes a break over December, January. But I think it's a nice way to get focused. It's a nice way, nice way to kick the season off. And it's a great event. You've obviously competed here before back in 2018. You mentioned, obviously, the course is very quick. But what about the other challenges, the fact that you have to start the race in the dark? Yeah, it's a great course. And it's because it's totally flat, uh, if there's no wind, it could really lend itself to a fast time. We have a really strong pack here this year, strong field. Uh, racing in the dark is a bit challenging. Our perception of speed is a bit skewed because you think we're going faster than we really are. So we have to pay attention if we want to go fast about what's going on, what we want to do. And then also, you know, there's just the little obstacles in the road that you might not see always in the dark coming up a bit faster. So just pay attention and be careful. What kind of shape do you think you're in? Because as you mentioned, you had a bit of rest over the winter period, but obviously it's, it's a good marker, isn't it, to kickstart the season here in Dubai? This race is always, you know, it, it, it's a great, it's, it, it helps us to, to stay focused over the holiday periods. Maybe, you know, not take as many days off, train a little bit harder, train a little bit harder sooner. And that helps us, you know, to get into great shape. So I'm feeling, I'm feeling quite good. I'm not feeling perfect, but that's not the plan. That's not where I want to be. I'm building up towards uh, September and Tokyo. So now set the benchmark, see where I am, see where the other guys are and take it from here. Well, you mentioned that it's an incredible entry list, some real talent here in 2020. At the end of the day, are you just focusing on your own race? Or are you mindful of the people as well around you? No, I mean, it's a really strong field and they've done a really great job in assembling the best guys in the world for this race. You have to be mindful of where you finish on the list because most of our rankings or most of our selection is based off rankings. So it, it's where you're sitting in the field. So I can be in the group, but I've been, if I've crossed the line last in the group, I might as well not come. So you have to be mindful, you have to focus. This is probably going to be slightly going for time, but tactical as well. You've had a phenomenal career, seven Paralympics. Ultimately, is Tokyo absolutely in the forefront of your mind for this year? First of all, there's, there's always the majors. So I focus on, on, this year I will focus on Tokyo, London, Boston. I haven't decided about Chicago or New York yet. And then it will move over to, to, to Tokyo 2020. So Tokyo 2020, it will be my last Paralympics if I can qualify. So obviously putting a lot of effort and work into that one. But mainly, you know, it's, it's going to be about the majors. As I said, you've had such a glittering, glittering career, but what gives you that impetus still to compete at this level? Because no disrespect, you're not getting any, any younger mm -hmm. and you still obviously have that drive and determination. It's, it's, and I was talking to somebody the other day, it's a way of life. It's a, it's a culture and a lifestyle that I got used to. And training is just part of every day. You, you go out and you do what you want to do. You know there's a next race coming. You look forward to seeing your friends and, and people you've learned over the years to get to know over the years at the races. So it's, it's become a, a way of life for me and it's going to be very, very hard to walk away from it one day. And I'll have to find something else to give me that edge or that peak or that interest in life. But it's just something I've enjoyed. It's something I look forward to and it's part of me. Back to tomorrow though, ultimately, here in Dubai. What would you be happy with in terms of time and results? I think if we can get anywhere under 126, it would set us up really well for the year. So Marcel did 124 by himself last year, so we know it's possible. With a strong field like this, it should really, it should really work out that way. So sub 126, that would set us up great for the year.